Welcome back to Unprovoked the Podcast. Hi, guys. Denise is currently recuperating. She might pop in. Um, but last night, we succeeded in surprising Shanice for her birthday. <laughs> and it was her first ever um, surprise and big birthday thing. And I think she said it on the podcast before that. <laughs> Hustle getting acclimated. Yeah. He getting himself together. It was a, a time was had. Um, she said it on the podcast before that she hated her birthday and none of us felt okay with that. Right. So Brittany had texted me and was like, you know, I hate the fact that Shanice hates her birthday. Like we really need to change that. And I was like, see, I was literally thinking the same thing. Shanice has been talking about this P Valley themed birthday for so long. Um, so we set up a pool party class. Yeah. And while we were at the pool party, Brittany was here setting up the apartment. I was surprised. <laughs> I didn't even know what she had set up. I walked in my house. And my house didn't even look like my house anymore. It really looked like P-Valley. It was like strobe lights and money and pink it, and it was, hoochies. It, <laughs> it was. Yo, cleaning this morning. I'm going to drop. Um, I'm going to make JoJo... Put the clip in of what it looked like. Accomplish the goal. Um, get you some friends that treat your birthday like their birthday. So, seeing those, seeing her genuine reaction, and like if we could stitch it, mm-hmm. we'll stitch it for both mm-hmm. um, events. Like that's the that's the part that right. that got me. Right. And she came in. She was like, "Oh my god!" When she came here, she was like, "Brett, Brett, <laughs> Brett's here!" <It's> so <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes, baby, I'm here." Because she, of course, she didn't know what was going on. And she was like, you know, honestly, I thought, I was like, oh, Britt got to work. And honestly, that, like, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, no, pumpkin, I'm going to be here. <laughs> she was like, when we, because they was in the city. So when they mm-hmm. crossed the bridge, she was like, I knew once we crossed the bridge, you was going to be there. Because we're not doing nothing in Jersey. And Kenny's going to be there. And I was like, well, as long as you knew. But, yeah, so a time was had. A time was had. My carpet is burnt. I woke up today. That's why I had no makeup. We we just on vibe. Right. Brittany was supposed to come here with sunglasses on, but I was like, let me pull it together. And this this what y'all got. Okay. <laughs> this is all I got for you. Period. Period. If Shanice does roll up in here, I can't wait for y'all to see what she looked like. It's gonna be a surprise for everybody. Yes. I tell you. But she definitely had a time, so that was the important part. Yeah. But. If you tuned into our last episode, we did inside the group chat. We had a segment, and today we have another one. Let me get to it. In the meantime, while you pull that up, how was your week? My week was great. Mm-hmm. There were some challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, so I 
got a new car. I said on the last episode that I was getting me. We got to drop that picture, too, because that picture was fire. Yes, I officially got my car. Um, The part of the car, it wasn't so much, like, the car, like, I'm not one of those, like, oh, you like how this drives? Like, I'm not all that. But it was more so of the fact that I came from not knowing how I was going to pay my rent or survive mm-hmm. or what I was doing from day to day to be able to afford something. And I put it all in my name, like, no co-signer, no nothing. It was more so that mm-hmm. accomplishment part. I was like, wow, like, I really did this all on my own. Mm-hmm. So that felt good. Um especially with how things are now, that felt really good. Mm-hmm. So it was more so like that. Like, I can't believe a year went by, and it's like this is how much things have changed. I had this really big account pending, and I I didn't I won't say I lost it. You didn't it. lose it. You didn't lose it. I didn't lose it. It was just unfortunate circumstances happened, and I didn't get it, but I worked really hard for it. But at first, I was getting, like, extremely stressed out. And then the night before, it was, like, decision-making. I prayed about it, and I was like, look, like, if this is not for me, I know that there was something in this that I was supposed to learn. Right, and you was busting your ass for this account. Yeah. So I was like, I did a lot. Like, and I, I impressed myself. Like, I was like, I didn't even know. So now I'm more so confident, like, I could talk to certain people, like, I could. Yes. It's more so a confidence, like, I needed that confidence, although I didn't get it, I also was very calm. I didn't get it based off of me, I got it based off of, like, circumstances, and, but it showed me, like, what I was capable of, so. And sometimes that's literally what it takes, it's mm-hmm. like, it's like a training session, right? So it's like, yeah, you didn't get it, but you know, you put the work in, and you did that, you did this, that, and the third, mm-hmm. you know, my shirt, Um, but... And then to the point, it was just like they were spin trying to spin a block, period. So, right. Kudos to you, pumpkin. Right. How was your week? How was my week? <laughs> my week was actually a good week. Um, so, uh, without saying too much, the dream house is expanding. <laughs> Everybody got good news on the same day. Yes. Oh, the dream house is expanding, and I am very excited about that. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. We are like six, seven months um, in business officially, and to see the growth and to see, like, everything that goes in, like, you know a lot of the the behind-the-scenes things, you know a lot of the tears, Mm -hmm. the struggles, Mm -hmm. and then to get to a point where it's just, like, you're comfortable enough and the opportunity arises to expand. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mind blowing. Right. So I just feel like, you know, that's the thing about entrepreneurship. It's not pretty. No. It's not warm. Bit of it is pretty. Um, there's a lot of battles you go throughout the way. Like there was a point where she didn't even know how she was gonna do it with what she had and now this is not even a year later, we're expanding. Like that's a very big deal and like that yeah. just goes to show it's just like although they're our plans right this is like god takes the lead and a lot of it it's 100%. Like, you know and she felt that in her heart when she was making the decision she knew that um it was god ordained like it was one of those things i know that this wasn't me this was bigger than me mm-hmm. um the purpose as well as just doing it and just living in it and watching it unfold, guys, it is, like, it is mind-blowing. It's insane. Sometimes you sit there and you're just like, I can't believe this is my life. Like. And it's, like, and it's and it's nothing, like, crazy fabulous mm-hmm. or anything like that. It's really just mm-hmm. the entrepreneurship aspect of it and watching it grow. It's, it's like watching a baby. Like, it's like watching a little hustle grow. Like, it's like, oh, my God. Like. This literally came from nothing. It was right. literally like barely even a concept. To now, it's just like okay, we're outgrowing certain things and like the overflow. Right. It goes back to one of our earlier episodes where it's just like it's so like God, I don't want to mess over this. Like, mm-hmm. but it's like it's coming so fast. I have to be in tune so I know what to do with it and to keep going. Right, you know. So like, even when that whole situation happened, I took it as. This situation is teaching me 
now to go harder because mm-hmm. I love the way this made me mm-hmm. feel. Mm-hmm. Like, I love the way, although it didn't, the outcome wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. It's like, I love the way this made me feel. And I know God purposely placed that in my life because it's like, I didn't want to mess it up. And I didn't mess it up. It just didn't go my way. But I had to take the wanting control of the outcome yeah. out. Oh, that's that, a word. And and that in itself is hard for me because I love to, I have an issue. I won't say I love because I'm changing it. I have an issue with wanting to control every outcome. Like I have an issue with wanting to control the way things turn out. Yep. But at the end of the day, you can't control the outcome. So it's like when something's for you, it's going to be for you. And if it's not, it's because it's preparation mm-hmm. for either something better or to move you. And even sometimes, even if it's not for something better, it's when our backs are against the wall, we become somebody else. We start to think differently. We start to do things differently. Like in the last episode, y'all just saw me. I was crying. Like I was depressed. I was confused. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, bartending kind of got slipped like, ripped from underneath me. So, like, there was a lot of changes happening at once. So, like, little things I started implementing was, like, I write three things I'm grateful for every night. Mm-hmm. Because it's, like, now if I shift my focus, I'm to focus on positive things. Mm-hmm. I won't be, like, well, this didn't happen and this right. didn't happen and this didn't happen. Now it's, like, my mental is starting to only focus on positive. Because now it's, like, I got to look at my day to know what I want to write down later. Right. I can't write the same thing. So right. It's like, I got to look at all the brighter things. So even in that situation, it wasn't a good outcome, but I can find what I was grateful for. Right. And as you said, it's just like, now you have a new developed confidence. Mm-hmm. You were able to sharpen your skill. It was just, it's the other things that came from that situation outside of something tangible. Right. right? And those are the things that we invest. So we add to our toolbox. Mm-hmm. To use, you know, in other areas. So that's that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so I was kind of like tested to stand on business this week. A word, because I am, and I haven't been. I am going to put this in. He used to be up here. <laughs> and it was one of those things where it was just like, you know, I had to... I was talking, hey, Tempest. I was talking to Tempest this morning, and I'm like, the thing about standing on business, and I hate, I'm starting to hate the term because it's so, like, cliche, but it is what it is, is that um, sometimes you really don't want to do it. And it's like, please don't force me to do this because if I do, I have to follow through, and I can't double back if I want you or whatever the situation to be taken serious. So it's like I don't necessarily want to rid myself of the situation or whatever it is, but if you are forcing my hand, like, bruh, please don't, because now I have to do something I don't want to do, but I have to. And my conversation was like, if it's your presence versus my peace, I'm always going to choose my peace. So it's like if your presence is disrupting that, I have to look at the two factors. Mm -hmm. I'm black and white. Right. I'm going to choose my peace. That's right. where I thrive. That's where I'm my best self. That's where I show up. Um, and, yeah. And the outcome of that made me feel very empowered. Because also when you kind of like standing on business, it's a gamble. So, Brittany succeeded in standing in on business. And I did the opposite. <laughs> don't feel empowered at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Business stood on me. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> as much as I didn't stand on business, it's actually laughable now because it's more so like, I'm going to take this shit for what it is and then it's like, I'm not, there's the stress behind it now is like, let's be fucking for real. Yeah, you get me like, even though it's like how you said, like if I don't stand on business, like how are you gonna take me or the situation serious? Mm-hmm. I don't even take me serious anymore. So it's like, 
sorry. I blame you for that. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is crazy. But it's honest. It's honest. And sometimes we just got to be honest with ourselves. But my whole thing is with that is that today today might have not been the day. Right. right. And next week, the week after, a month from now. And that's why I also don't, like, I don't, my word of the year was grace, right? I give myself grace because although I accept a lot sometimes and I don't stand on business, when I do, I do. Mm-hmm. And everybody can say that. Mm-hmm. Like, when I finally pull through, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, I knew you had it in you somewhere. You just had to get your... Like, you know, we just... Stella was, had to get her groove back. We was just sitting here waiting, you know, <laughs> wasting away. <laughs> but, yes, it's not a... Like I said, it's a hard thing. It's That shit is hard as hell because it's like, you gambling. It's 50-50. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, it's kind of like, I'm about to call my bluff. But, you know, you stand on it and... The person respects your boundaries. Perfect. Mm-hmm. We good to go. I didn't have to dis- make a decision I didn't want to make. So mm-hmm. that made me feel good. That made me feel empowered. It made me feel confident in my decision making and being able to be like, I'm okay walking away from this if this is not going to bring me peace in my life. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, I'm <sighs> definitely okay walking away. It's just like there's still things like I entertain. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's the part. And I, I had that conversation with Brittany yesterday. I'm like, this part that's triggering me, I have to get over. Mm-hmm. Like, this is where I have to get over. Mm-hmm. But everything is a learning lesson. We don't wake up one day and just have it all figured out. No. You know, like, we don't, this takes practice. And like, if you're in the beginning of standing on business, you're not going to do it the first go around. No. Like, it's going to take some practice. You're going to have to not stand up business a few times. Get stood until, on. Right. You're going to you're gonna get stood on a few times. You get stood on. And so you tie your shoelaces a little stronger, and then you stand on your business. It's one of those things where it's like you just being more account, not accountable, but like, what's the word? Like, cognizant of it. Mm-hmm. You become more sensitive to things. Mm-hmm. So the first, yeah, the first time you may not stand on business, but you might be like, "Yo, this is boring." It was like, "I'm tired of having this conversation. I'm tired of this, that, and the third. Where it's like you would do it repeatedly before because you were in a routine. Now you're like, "I don't want to talk about this. I, I don't like want to." Right. It's like I could sit here. We can go back and forth. This is the problem. She's spoiled. My sh- I can't even finish my sentence because mm-hmm. my baby is spoiled. But yeah, as you said, this is the problem. This is the problem. <laughs> no, but I was saying, um, like, even now, it's like, although I didn't stand on business, mm-hmm. it's like there's certain things I'm not having a conversation about mm-hmm. anymore. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm, this is repetitive. Mm-hmm. Like, I already know what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. You already know what I'm going to say. So it's like, we both not taking what I'm saying serious. So I might as well stop talking about it. And as soon as you get bored of having to have these conversations, Mm -hmm. you no longer want to do the same thing. So it's to be like, hi. That's the wild part. When you get bored of your own conversation, bro, I've been there. (laughs) And I'll say it. I like to talk, but I don't like keep talking about the same Same thing. Same thing. So something, like, either you change how you show up in a situation or I change how I change up. Period. And if you don't want to change, I'm going to make the change because now I'm I'm bored. I'm over it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to do this anymore. So... Yeah. That's it's exactly a, what I thought. I was like, at the end of the day, is I'm not having the same conversation over and over again. It's This is more so a learning lesson for me. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I'm going to take my lesson, mm-hmm. whether you learn yours or not. Mm-hmm. I gave you your chance. This is for me. Like, this is personal. So, sometimes in situations, you can't be offended by somebody else's actions. Because of your expectations of them. Mm-hmm. You put expectations on somebody that didn't ask for those expectations to be put on them. Yeah. And Brittany told me that yesterday and it hit me. It's like, she's like, you're putting a role on somebody who never asked for that role. And I'm like, you know what? That's that's real. Like, just take, take certain people for what they are. That's it. Versus what you want them to be. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. if someone's going to be something, they're going to be that. You can't force it. You can't talk them into it. You can't 
act right so they could be a certain way. And I feel like women have that problem. We feel like if I do this, he'll act better. Or if I do this, no matter what it is, if I show how valuable I am, the situation will change. You need to know your value, not yourself. for a situation, yep. but for yourself. Yep. And that's more so how I feel now. It's like, I might look stupid in the situation, but I know my value. I know what my intentions were. And not my intentions are like that. The thing about it is, it's just like, I said, I was talking earlier and I said something about ego death. And it's just like the death of the ego where it's like, yeah, I might look stupid, but I'm learning things. Mm-hmm. I'm intentionally learning things. Yep. So it's like, yeah, I just look stupid today, but tomorrow I may not. In two weeks, I may not. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know exactly what I'm getting out of it. And when it's my time and I'm ready, I'll do what I got to do. Okay. It doesn't matter when the lesson was learned. You will learn your lesson. And best believe certain things are going to spin the block just to test your growth. Yeah. My. To provoke you. To provoke you. A week ago, I got a phone call that provoked me. Mm -hmm. And this was something that was left unsaid for two years. I've been battling with unsaid words for two years. And like I said, everything spins the block. But who I am today, although it still provokes me, I'm not the girl I once was two years ago where that that right. situation would have been very different. Right. So it's like, I'm not that girl. I might not have it all figured out now, but I'm definitely not the same girl I was two years ago. Right. Hey, how did it feel? It felt good. It felt really good. I felt very empowered on the phone. So it's like, I'm empowered in that situation. I might not be empowered in this situation, but eventually, I am going to be. Right. You know? So it's like, everything is trial and error. So it's like, we need to be okay with not having it all figured out. Right. And I was the one person that I was very hard on myself. So in a situation where, oh my God, I feel so stupid, I would let it absorb me, like feel so dumb. For what? We all do it. And I know I ain't going to be dumb forever. That's the thing. It's like, once you realize, everybody got their moment. (laughs) Everybody got their moment. Ain't nobody got it all figured out. And it was really, it wasn't until I started being honest with myself about what things that I used to deal with and go through, where it's just like, I I honestly was a girl that would, like, pass judgment. I ain't even going to lie. I was like, I'm not going to, how can somebody be with somebody that cheated on them? And blah, blah, blah. I was once that girl until that shit happened to me and it humbled me real quick where it's just like, ain't nobody exempt. Right. Like, so we all go through shit and we all learn in our own way. And that's just that. Like, that goes with gracing yourself, having grace with mm-hmm. yourself and your learning, your learning process. Um, but yeah, I am proud of us this week. What no matter that business stood on you, I am proud of it. Thank you. So because business stood on me, but it was more so a lesson for me at the end of it. So it's like I'll take care of it. Um, stood on this week. Period. Okay. Can't next wait to week. see you next week. <laughs> next week I might do the stand. I can't wait to see next week. But um, all right. Now what? What you got? And it kind of goes into what we was talking about. I know. I was thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Bye, Hustle. You got to say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. <laughs> you going with Uncle Daddy. <laughs> okay, so inside the group chat. Love versus lust. Everybody wants to say I love you, but the truth is they really should say I lust you because that's really what they do. You love your mother, you love your father, but that man, we don't love him, we lust him. <laughs> let's see I'll definitely say there's certain situations I probably said I love somebody but I definitely lusted them I mean well I don't use love so casually with my, I mean with my friends well no I don't. in romantic situations I don't use love so casually I know what this is and what it ain't I definitely use love casually. what <laughs> what like, wait. I haven't. And, like, not meant it? Like, I haven't recently. I might have thought I loved them in the moment. But then when you really look back at the situation, it was like, that was lust. That was not love. 
What was the criteria? Right. What got them to the, like, I love you. Like, I love him. Like, what was the, how did he, am what? I, am I mean him? <laughs> yeah. I love the little But oh, what confuses me is, like, you love your mother, you love your father, you lust that man. They all can't coexist. I'm asking. It's definitely different love, but I definitely. It, there's obviously been situations where I was like, oh, no, I love that man. I'm going to forever love that man. Mm-hmm. Like, I have truly experienced what love was with one person. And I I think this love situation happened after I experienced love. I think I, was, I wanted to experience that so bad again that I created a situation that it wasn't. Start projecting. Yeah, I, you start projecting, like... Mm-hmm. I feel like I experienced love. I knew what it felt like. Um, I love that man. And when I got into another situation, I more so was trying to fit a square into a circle. And it did not fit. Um, We probably threw the love word around a few times. But, um, yeah. It's like drugs, honestly. It's one of those things where it's like you chase this high, right? And you feel the high of love, and <laughs> look who's here! The <laughs> birthday girl has arrived. Period. <laughs> Not I didn't have my cake. Yeah, she's gonna join us in two seconds. Y'all hear her talking about cake? So, hey, right there. Hey, TJ. I'm I dead. know, I know, all is getting cut out. Right. So we might as well. Yeah, Joe, don't cut all this out. Keep that in. Keep that in. Yes. <laughs> yes. Every time, S Valley. That's who. <laughs> How you feel, Mama? I feel sensational. Girl, don't bite me. <laughs> don't bite me. Oh, hold on. Wow! Yes, y'all getting a sneak peek of yesterday. Giovanni just cut the whole thing. No, Giovanni, keep this in. This is raw. This is raw. This This is is raw. Yo, I got on my Sky Zone socks. That's how you know it's real. And I cut myself. Like Like, it's it's, it's a wild weekend, guys. It's a wild weekend. The little um my makeup brush holder Uh it broke. Hey, mama. My dumb ass left the whole... I'm grabbing the shit out the... the <laughs> it's in a bag. I took the whole box with me. You know when somebody describing something, you could just literally, like, feel it, like a chill come, like, yeah, oh, I feel the pain? I um, I had took it with me to the Bronx because I didn't know what I would be doing this weekend. Mm-hmm. And um, this is going to be very greasy, so it's not going to stick. <laughs> so um, I had took the whole thing with me to the Bronx, and it, my bag fell, and the makeup holder thing... Yeah. It broke and I left it in the bag and my dumb ass was just now like just oh, oh. split me right in half. So we're gonna finish our inside the group chat, but then we're gonna get back to you. So we can ask you about tonight because we talk about it. Okay. Um, inside the group chat, just to catch you up, we're talking about love versus lust. Mm-hmm. Um, just trying to make sure Hustle doesn't bite my toe. He nicked me yesterday. <laughs> Gotta watch him now. Getting a little older. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, the kids get a little older. You got to start watching them. Look at his lazy butt. I can't. Like, I can't. <laughs> love versus lust. Okay, I'm listening. I can't. Love versus lust. Um, Brittany said that she does not use love freely. And I said, I'm, de- I'm definitely so In romantic lust. relationships? Hell no. I'm just start referring to Brit as real nigga all day and tomorrow. <laughs> Here he is. It just don't sit well with her. All the, the, the mushy shit just don't sit well on that side. <laughs> it don't. Yeah, I promise I got a heart and a soul. Where is that? I'm not the Timmy. Where, where is that? I'm but looking like, for... But, like, why would I tell you I love you? We, we don't... Oh, wait, okay, so... This ain't so that. What, what, what happened? So, love versus love. Britt said... You don't... You don't use it. Like, freely in romantic relationships? No. Like, if I love you, like, my boyfriend... And, like, if I've been kicking it with you for some time, like, you put time in to earn it, yeah. But, like, I don't just be like, I love him. I'm the meme that she said, I'm in love with him. She said, bitch, you just met him. How long has it been? 24 minutes. Yeah, uh, like, I love him. 24 minutes. No. I was telling her, I'm like, you know, sometimes I feel like we try to fit a square into a circle. 
And I've definitely been in a situation, especially after my relationship, I think I wanted to experience a love like that again mm-hmm. that I was kind of just... Mm-hmm. Yearning for it. Yeah, yeah. like, you're, so it was lust. Like, mm-hmm. I loved the feeling, so I interpreted it as I loved him. Mm-hmm. But that was not the case. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that's easy. But I also, I feel like something she said, like, you know when we have a, a routine with somebody... Like, he's texting you every day. Like, y'all see each other often. Like, it that lust becomes, like, you feel like it's love. Oh, but that's the thing. And I, that's why I was like, well, what's the fucking criteria? Because it's like, <laughs> routine does not give me love. That gives me routine. <laughs> like, no, it's one of those things routine. where it's like, I, I love a good routine. And I've been in a routine. You know, like, y'all know whatever. Um, That's a bad example. But, granted, I've been in routines before. But like you, I put some work in for me. Like, like no, I like let us do. Like, I love everybody. he do his. I love everybody. I do. I love everybody. Not just you think men. It's love or if it's a lust. I mean, that people. should definitely be lust. I love everybody. I'm so like, oh, and I'm it's so crazy because everybody think I'm so mean, but I love everybody. Like, and that's that's why I said romantic relationships because like I saw all my know, clients. So I can't leave. really. Oh my god, that. love you. Love you, boo. Love you. I love you. No. But if it's like with a dude, I'm not. You, I don't. I honestly don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because I love love. I love love so much, I, and I think that's why I hold it so sacred. Because okay, I that's a good love, way to look at love. it. Like I do love love. Like deep down inside, I am a lover girl. Yeah, but that's deep something deep that gotta be earned. The core. Yeah, it's to the like the core of the earth. But it gotta be earned because once you get there, or if you get there, it's up for you. I think I just say it, so I think it might just be like. Love it's it. like sometimes it's natural. Like yeah. like I said with my clients, everybody, I love, love you. you. Love you, girl. Love you, boo. See you <laughs> next week. Like, and I do, but it's like you know, it's just natural. And not so natural when it comes to a man. No, because what are, what are you doing? Yeah, me and Shanice get lost. I do. I be I be heavy. I well, excuse me. I <laughs> was like, heavy last night, baby. Right. Yeah. It gonna be tight like that. <laughs> I yeah. lust you, baby. Yeah, it definitely be lust. It don't be like because after a while, I'll be like, Oof. right? I, you know, right? You Once I, yeah. he be jeebies. Because yeah, no I'm matter like, what, like although the person I was in love with, we are not together. I still love him. Like I will Same. forever love. I him. have like, love for you. I will. Ever, I will forever love that man and have love for him. But the other people that I fall in love, like who? Yeah. <laughs> right, you but I feel the same way. Like, you to get sick to your I mean, I haven't really said it a lot to a lot of people, so that's a thing for me. Like, I felt like, damn, like, I, 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 like, I love uh, you, gang. Like, I, I love you. Not you, gang. you, gang. No, you, gang. Right. Like, you, gang. I love you like gang. But to be like, you know what? Like, 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 I love you. I love. I love him. you like gang. Like, I like building something with somebody. You know, routine, right? So now I love the routine that we built, and. No, 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 but I'm saying, like, right. I love the routine. Right, so I love the routine that we built, and if we, if it just so happens that we go our separate ways, I still have love for you. I still have a certain respect for you. Yep. And I'm not in love with you, mm-hmm. but I hold you still very dear to my heart. Yeah. That there's certain things that you can still call me for that other niggas can never call me for. So, the, and that list over here is thin. Right, right. So it's just like, I have love for you, gang. You gang. Now you, now you gang, like... You yeah, know, I so it is. I don't love. see a problem with that. I do not see an issue with that I've at all. I've definitely been in situations where I thought I love this person, and that's me. We should hold hands because we have both been there. <laughs> we need help. Yeah, I think I'm drinking fantastic, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to push through it. It's getting worse. Uh-uh. No, no, I can't. Go ahead, you both. go ahead, y'all. I've definitely been in situations. I thought I loved this man, my and mama, yeah. he really gang. Like he's that. They will forever be like my boy. Don't love him though. Mm-mm. Right. Mm-mm. Yeah. I look back at what I. I'm like, ooh, what, what were you going through? That you. Was, ah. But with the with the with the person say it was like you love your mother, you love your father, you don't love that man, you lust him. But it's like you love your mother, you love your father, you love your family, whatever, because people have showed showed up for you. They have mm-hmm. invested certain things in you. So if there is a man that has done those things, of course you're not like my mother, but if you've invested and showed up for me when I need you and like show me you fuck with me, like mm-hmm. yeah, you are earning that thing from right. me. But if it's just because you, you know, we talk on a regular basis and everything like that, you don't get love from me. Like, get some respect, you know. 
you might I might answer you a little faster, but to be like, oh, I just love him. What makes you love and really somebody? and for real and for real mean it? Nah. Which what makes you love somebody though? How you sh- how you show up for me? Yeah. Literally. Me? Yeah. Probably for you. Like what you pour into me, how especially with me, like I give so much. So it's like one, if I'm being heard, um, the things you can do to take like some weight off of me. Mm-hmm. Um, just like things like that. Everything made me love. Somebody told me not like, before, like, oh, um, I was like, damn, I forgot, such and such. No, I didn't even say I forgot. I was like, yo, I don't know how this has happened. And they said, well, X, Y, and Z. And I was like, damn, how you remember that? And it was like, I remember the things I, I, I remember things for people I care for. I melted. I was like, oh, I'm in love. Because I totally <laughs> forgot. It was months ago. And I'm like, I said, damn, you got impeccable memory. Like, how do you remember that? He was like, well, I remember the thing. I remember things for people I care for. And it, it meant something to you. So that's why I remembered it. I feel like that investment you pour into people and you see them pouring it back, it's just like, all right, you might be earning right. a certain that, spot. Yeah, and I feel like that was like, oh, you definitely could have earned yeah. a bit of my love. Like, you got half a heart, not even half a heart. Ba-boom. You know, it was like a puzzle. You got a little piece of it right there. there. Mm-hmm. But stuff like that is what... Say, what you say, JoJo? Because we don't hear you. We have conditional love, JoJo said. Well, I, but... Mm-hmm. They say women do that to men a lot. Women, women love men conditionally but unconditional, or under the terms that but we give. Un, we unconditional give love like is men love unconditionally. Bullshit. I think they do. What you think men love unconditionally? Yeah. Let a bitch get big. <laughs> Let a bitch get big. I think men love unconditionally, and women don't. More than women, because he's he's right. And the you. Yeah. Oh, JoJo need a mic today. I'm so mad. But that's not a condition. That's literally something you should be doing for a partner. Okay, I say that because I say that because um, on you know certain podcasts, men not having conditions is crazy. This no, I'm not saying that they don't have conditions, but men will love you. Did he just bust his big ass head? <laughs> that was him. I thought that was upstairs, y'all. Men will love you under under the terms when they meet you. Like, you ever meet a guy, you'll be like, oh, my God, what are you attracted to? I, I look like nothing today. And it was like, but I could just see it through you. Like, whatever, whatever. You ever meet somebody like that? Mm-hmm. You feel like you on your worst day, and he like, mm-mm. So a man will see you like that and then still be willing to take you on the day, still get to know you. And then possibly, it may take him a little longer to fall in love with you because we women, I feel like women fall faster. But if you go on a date, what I told you. Thank you so much. We'll go on a date, and it'll be like, well, where do you work at? What do you do? Who do you live in? It's just like, mm, he's not checking my boxes. Those are conditions. But I don't think that equates to love, though. Not love, but he, you can't even get to the love because you already don't check any of my boxes. There's no condi- – that's condi- – like, those are conditions But the, the, to no, me. That's, those are certain standards. Those are standards, but you can't even make it through the door. Like, I'm not even willing to part. With a man will just, just, I feel like a man will, will take try. anything. A man will take anything and build it. Oh, He'll build with it. I feel like a man oh, will take anything. Not I'm not going to say completely anything, but a man will come to you with nothing. Like, not expecting nothing from you. Yeah, I feel like a man will come to you expecting nothing. I know men, because I know men who will come to you with, like, I right, she don't really got much. She, she not working right now. She not doing this. I but agree. we look at men and we'll be like, oh, he not working. He did what? what? Mm-mm, no, but, mm-mm. but a man will look at you and be I like, know, I, "Yeah, a man will look at you and be like, oh, she not working right now. She not really on her no, feet right now.' And he'll no. stick around till you get on your feet. A man will stick around till you get on your feet. And a woman, we don't do that. Yes, the fuck we, we do under conditions, though. No, no, no. no. If he, okay, if that dick no. trash, you ain't staying, huh? Yeah. Huh? That dick trash, you ain't staying. No, I'm gonna teach you how to. It didn't, it didn't ever happen. <laughs> <laughs> Baby. <laughs> no, it's not happening. No. I don't know. No, it's no. I don't. Mm, mm. I do. I feel like that. I do not think we be out here like like hard up like that. This is a really good conversation. We are going to have, we are going to continue this conversation next week with a man. Who? We, you... <laughs> we going to find one. Drop drop some names below who you want to see again. Oh my god, Christ. I like so much. Who? who? The guy on Instagram. <laughs> we know him? We can get to know him. <laughs> yeah, I'm dying. I'm gonna I forgot your name, but we're gonna 
we're gonna we're gonna tag you in this. I love this man. Yeah, I need I need I we need this I need this man. conversation to be fleshed out. No, no, I love <laughs> right. this man. Right. I love his point of view. I love his point of view and I love the way he th- I had posted him. Oh my gosh, what is your name? I don't know, but I'm a, I'm a, when we off air, I'm gonna show y'all his page. I, he would be so good for this conversation. I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, y'all. The f- no, no. The so fact that y'all be- say no, women love with conditions and men don't. That okay? Let's not say men don't love okay. with conditions. Okay. Let's say men have less conditions. Less conditions. Men are willing to build a bitch. I will give you that. I mean, big build a bitch. Yes. Okay, I agree, with that. I agree. Jojo said, if y'all didn't hear him. No, they didn't hear him. Yeah. When, when, what was it? Because I don't want to fuck it up. For who you are, women love you for what you do for them. What you could do for them. What you could do for them. To a certain degree, I agree. However, I think women look to see if there's security there before they start making investments. We make emotional investments in men. Right. And it's just like, and those are those are very dangerous. So it's like, I think up front, we're like, okay, is he worth certain emotional investments? Mm-hmm. Whereas with men, I don't know, I don't feel it's the same way. I feel like, oh, shit, I just lost my thought. I was so fixated on women. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like we before we make these emotional deposits into men, we need to see, well, you know, what is what what does he bring to my God table? God damn. It's like Jurassic Park up there. Right. That's probably why I'm losing my, yeah. my focus. Um, but I also feel like, bro, like, it's a gender thing, too. Because it's certain things that men expect from women and women expect from men. No matter how the times change, women still want a provider. Period. So if you are out here like, well, can he provide or certain things can he do for me? I don't think that's that's a problem. Because men are gonna want certain women to do certain things for them too. I did, okay. Because I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what I said. I think next week, JoJo's probably gonna be the man. Um, we are gonna have this microphone mic'd up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm about to go get it right now. We're about to, we're going to have the conversation. Do men love with conditions? Versus how women love with conditions. What makes a woman? What makes a man love a woman? What makes a woman love a man? We will go there. Um, but all, we're all three women, and obviously our point of views are always different. But men have a whole different brain. So and I love the male brain. Yeah, as hard as as I am, I do love the male brain. It's so very interesting. Julia would be a really good person for this conversation. Oh, Judah uh, Surgeon. <laughs> Look him up on Instagram. <laughs> um, so yeah, that we'll definitely have this conversation next week. But quickly before we wrap this up, Shanice, mm. how was your first ever surprise birthday party? It was great. We went to the pink. <laughs> no crying at the pink. We did. We flew all the way out to the shit. My body hurt so bad. I was doing handstands. <laughs> we were shaking ass. You still got your tattoo? <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> so, you know. It was it a was, great time. time was had, time guys. Was my body had. is sore. My legs hurt, you know, because I was just like, I was clapping on the phone. I'm lying. I'm lying. But we had so, no, I no. had so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> we had mad fun. I was really, like, shocked. Because I'm like, yeah, I know I'm, I'm from New York. So, I'm like, we crossing the bridge. And I'm like, what the fuck going on? Like, we're going to stop in Edgewater, Fort Lee. Mm. We're going a little further than that. She's involved. She's involved. It's crazy. She's involved. Anything past that, I know my girls is not. They not too into Jersey. So, I'm like, this is the group chat. So, I'm like, now we, we getting on one of the highways that go to my house. I'm like, where the fuck are we going? Are we going to my house? I'm a little confused. And then I realize we are not at my house. And I'm like, this is not a familiar Spot. I don't know this spot. So then we like pulling up, and I'm like, we pulling up to a light, and I'm like, that's that's Gabby's car. 
That's her car. And they're like, you're too focused. You're too focused. <laughs> and I'm like, turn the music Mind you, Kim has a new car. Kim so the fact car. that she knows it's her new car is crazy. And I'm like, I just don't know the plate. That's all I'm in the car saying. I'm just looking. I'm like, I just don't know the plate. So she's pulling up slowly. And I'm like, oh, it's a man. And they're like, you're too focused. And I'm like, I just got to know what's going on. Because now I don't know why y'all in Jersey. And we get there. We pull in. Of course, I see her car. I'm like, mm, she's here somewhere. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Where are we? And I open that door. I see them poles. A time was had. She said, we shaking ass tonight. I couldn't wait to shake ass. I love to shake ass for real. She did. Yeah. But, I had my fun. Um, drop your inside the group chat to be featured on the next one. Right. We will be saying everything we get. Mm-hmm. Um, like, comment, subscribe. And we will see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye. Welcome to Chuckalisa. <laughs>